boy, this is one of the largest sushi, conveyor belt sushi shops in the world. And it's right in front of the tallest freestanding tower in the world. I'm in Tokyo, Japan. Of course I am. And in this episode, I just want to talk about something that is a phenomenon that is going on here in Japan in a debate that I think is very interesting, especially for the outside world, especially for people who are coming here to be YouTubers to film in Japan. Um, recently, there's something called meiwaku videos, meiwaku doga, which is uh, this kind of uh, nuisance videos, they call it in Japanese, where uh, kids have been imitating other kids that have done it by going into the... Um, right now conveyor belt sushi shops, but also in, in curry restaurants, which happened four years ago. This is no new phenomenon, but over the last few months, it's been increasing to a disturbing level. And just a few days ago, uh, a YouTuber, I think it was an Instagrammer, you could take a look at this picture here. He, uh, he licked the soy sauce bottle, he licked the cups, and then he licked his fingers and painted a, a what looks like Ika sushi. And this was just a few days ago, and it's really making the rounds on Japanese uh, uh, TV news programs because the debate is real. This impacts, I think, YouTubers as well, people that are filming without permits and permission, which is a lot of people. And um, I have to find the direction I also have to walk in. And I, I really, really hope that this does not turn out badly. I know a lot of you will come here and take videos inside of sushi shops. You want to film Japan, you want to take pictures here, but with all the bad stuff that's happening, there's a possibility that there's a crackdown on people doing what I do. And uh, I completely understand that too, because I try very hard, especially with my main channel, to get permits. So when I'm filming something, I have permission the company knows I'm there. That's the usual way to make videos. You don't walk into a shop and just start filming. And I think maybe nine out of 10 YouTubers that come here from abroad don't have permits to film inside of restaurants, which are private locations and you really need to do that. I, on this channel, often don't do that either because it's just too hard. It can take weeks to get the permission to go in and film there but all the other YouTubers and everybody else is doing it, so you do it too. And I think there's going to be a robust debate here in Japan about this. It's just, it impacts society greatly, especially a, a country where trust is really important. And that's why such a thing could, could last. It's always just so impressive to be in front of the sky tree. It's one of my favorite places. Um, where's the sushi? All right, so very quickly, Jap Twitter is huge in Japan. Very quickly, Twitter took over, and they found out who the perpetrator was, who this person was. They tracked him down. They showed his high school photos. They completely shamed him on Twitter, which is uh, what Twitter does <laughs> in these kinds of situations. And this kid is going to have a really tough time in life now because this is going to follow him to the end of time. There's a rumor that his father may have even been the one recording the video, which would be more disturbing. But again, I was reminded on Twitter that such things are not, it's not true until it's been vetted by actual reporters. So if you do go down the rabbit hole on this, please be aware that a lot of it could be just rumors or hearsay or people exaggerating who would do something like that. I, I don't. I try, I try not. This is very, there's very factual um, thing. The Meiwak Doga has, uh, uh, the, the one that I saw first, I think, was, um, I don't want to say it. All right, the second one that I saw, probably there was a video uh, of, 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 of several years ago. And this is the, th this is the part that's going to shock a lot of you. Uh, there were several years ago, there was a video about, um, uh, uh, a, a, a Coco Ichiban curry, and this guy was eating out of the pickles tray. There, there's these really nice uh, daikon pickles that eat that complement the Japanese curry very well. And he was eating out of it like this. It was just disgusting. The same spoon that he was putting in his mouth. And the customers got really upset. They wanted to know where the place was. They wanted to, to stay away from that restaurant. Do you want to know how the restaurant dealt with this? The restaurant chain? This is 
This is so Japanese. They, they, um, they, there was no criminal prosecution of this or anything like that. They asked for an apology. They got an apology from him, a deep apology, and that's the end of the story. No fines, nothing. The reputation of the chain, the restaurant, was highly diminished for a while, but they've had, you know, every chain I think has had pretty big issues. The PR issue would be if they did prosecute this, this would look bad for the company too. So they're in a lose-lose situation when something like this happens. Um, in this case though, I think, and this is the debate, and I, I, I would love to hear your comments on it. Um, how, how do you deal with something like this? Because people are now seeing this on social media. If the penalty is just a, an apology that could be not genuine, where usually people would be embarrassed by this discovery, and that embarrassment would be so extreme and so embarrassing for your family that you wouldn't ever do anything like this again. But it's not working anymore. Social media is the catalyst. Social media is what's driving this, getting people to post this stupid stuff. And here's the thing. I wonder how many times has this happened before and you just didn't know it. So this is going to be a huge debate here in Japan as, as people um, talk about what, it, it, are these sushi shops, and not just that, are, are public restaurants, family restaurants that have things out on the table, is it safe? Is it clean? Are there people doing bad stuff to it? Can you see the risks? In Japan, chefs don't wear gloves. The reason why is that they, well, especially sushi chefs, because that's part of what they do. They handle the food, and that's what makes it special, right? But honestly, there's going to be huge debates on that as well. In California, by law, you have to wear gloves. In Japan, you don't. It's like saying why, why what, your mom should wear gloves when she cooks in the kitchen. It's just, it's just not a thing that people do here in Japan for chefs. Professional chefs, they wash their hands. Have you ever seen a sushi chef's hands? They're, they're cleaner than the gloves, which could have chemicals on them from the production of it. It's crazy how clean a sushi chef's hands are. I've seen them file down their nails and all the skin off of it. It, it looks like they should be hand models. But, like, culture is changing. And I think social media is a huge, huge, great thing. And also, it's, a, it's also a very bad thing. And we're seeing the bad in Japan here. So I'm really excited to see your feedback and your comments on this. Um, you can see here the Japan Times. The Japan Times has a, has a story just a couple of days ago on this where the sushi chains are now considering to take it really harsh measures. And I don't think they have really much of a choice, do they? They have to kind of do this or else it's going to be... I mean, <laughs> what do you do? I asked on Twitter, uh, sorry, on Instagram stories to, for people to give me feedback, and I read it this morning. What, what should the companies do to try to, to uh, stop this type of thing? And everybody, almost everybody, was saying they need to be arrested. They need to be made examples of. They need to be fined heavily. They need to be, nobody was lenient on these people. I don't think I'm gonna eat at conveyor belt sushi for a while because this is going on everywhere, all over the country. So, it's just a few cases. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber, <laughs> that's what I do. Just a few cases, yeah. Um, yeah, again, the, the punishment until now has been an apology. Uh, we saw you, uh, we saw you eat half a sushi and put it back on the conveyor belt. Please apologize. And the company has to sanitize the entire conveyor belt, probably the, the entire restaurant. But they should probably be doing that anyways, right? I love conveyor belt sushi. One commenter on Instagram uh, on my story said that this should be a time to go more to conveyor belt sushis to support them. And I think that that could be something that, that uh, is valid because I would hate to see some of these places go out of business. Look, there's the ticket checkers. They're such a, they're such a team, look at that. They're going to, uh, 
ticket bicycles and, and stuff. There's a police station near here too. So I have to be a little careful. It's interesting. I, I, I'm personally, I'm grossed out, but I'm still gonna go to Kaiten sushi places, but just not for a while. We call it Kaiten sushi, the sushi go round or conveyor belt sushi. But is it dirty? Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I never eat off of the belt. It, it's for the exact reason that we saw the video. You don't know how long it's been out. You, well, you kind of do. Um, on the bottom of the plates, there's a QR code that has registered the time it was made and it automatically dumps into the trash if it has been on the belt for too long. So there is technology to make sure that, that this sushi is, is good enough. But seeing what you see and these sushis go past people's tables where manners have been not great. And this is not, again, this is every generation will say that the generation before the generation after them is worse, <laughs> but they're pretty bad. This isn't a bunch of foreigners either, and I, I saw the comments on Instagram shocked that they weren't Japanese. They, were, they weren't foreigners, sorry. And that's, that's quite true. I'm walking towards the uh, earthquake center to make a video right now. That's quite true. Um, these weren't foreigners. This wasn't uh, another, you know, American YouTuber coming here and making a jerk out of himself. This was Japanese kids. The way things used to go in the olden days, if a kid went to like an alcohol machine or something and he was underage and he was able to buy beer, there would always be a grandmother who saw him and would report it to his parents who would be in huge trouble. And the fact that somebody saw him buying the alcohol would disgrace the family and it would go back onto the parents. These days though, with social media and the way that parents are kind of, uh, I don't know, just busy, a lot of it gets lost. And there's been an increase in parental abuse of kids over the pandemic. A lot of more violence in Japan, a lot more crime in Japan. Even though the population is decreasing, there's a lot more bad stuff happening here so I think we all believe that Japan is a really super safe country, and it is. But it's not 100% it's not perfect, and you do have to have your guards up. And I think food safety is one thing. Maybe you should question just a little bit, because it is a thing. It's a thing. Do you want to see this video? All right, the, the, the hashtag I put it, the hashtag that's going around on Twitter is Sushiro Pero Pero in katakana and if you put that in there you're gonna see a bunch of really nasty things this is so cool check it out this is where i'm going the bosai center where they're doing uh, earthquake prevention and they have a, a fire engine up there probably they're um practicing and cleaning the windows i mean if you're a firefighter and you had firefighters with hoses i guess they would be in charge of cleaning the windows right that makes sense. Why would you hire an outside company when you have all the equipment to clean windows right here? That's awesome. Oh, it's so awesome. This is my destination. All right, I'm gonna show you the video now, for better or for worse. It's, it's gonna be really small. There it is on the side here. You see he's putting his finger in. Um, the most disturbing thing, if it's true, is that his dad was the one filming it. I, I don't, I like, why would you post this video too? You know, because you know that everyone is going to figure out who you are. This is the internet. Or maybe this is what they wanted. Maybe they knew the penalties weren't going to be harsh. Look at him loading up his finger. This is just, I can't even watch this. I won't, I'll watch him cleaning the windows. Oh. And look, he's so proud at the end of it. You know, this is gonna be an interesting debate here in Japan. This is going to be the debate that they talk about on TV probably for the next couple of, of weeks because it is a, it's a societal debate on the way, I know who records their own crimes? I think it's because they didn't think it was a crime. I think they saw other people doing it 
And so they thought it was okay. And those other people just got an apology as a, as a punishment. Um, there's no mask mandate in Japan. There was never any punishment. So people who wanted to go against societal norms would just be looked at and, and disgraced in the Japanese way, which is very powerful here. But it seems like that power has decreased to the point where people don't care. And it's actually more Western leaning in a way. So hopefully over the next uh, couple of weeks, this is debated. And the actions taken in Japan are usually quite harsh. All right, They usually react by doing something extreme and then bringing the rules down. When a dude flew a drone under the roof of the prime minister's building, they banned drones in Japan for like six months. And then it gradually, slowly, they changed the rules and it's still pr quite strict compared to other countries as a result of that. This is one of those societal issues. It's been going on for a while, but now the public is outraged. So we're gonna see where this goes because I am quite worried as a YouTuber that this could limit the things that I can do even though I'm trying really hard to do good things to help them, maybe they're not gonna want that help because when you, social media gets such a bad rap in Japan, especially after an American YouTuber you know, went to the suicide forest and, and filmed suicides and stuff like this, it really hurts us who are here making YouTube content and those coming here to make content about, about Japan, which I think can be quite valuable to this country. Um, They'll find a way to blame foreigners. I don't think so, TKC. It's very obvious this is not foreigners, and the issues go deeper than that. But the media platforms they're posting on are foreign. Maybe, I don't know. But I, honestly, I think people have, have gone to the level now where it's, it's not just blaming. There's always going to be a very small percentage of people who do that, and they get blown up so much that you see that on the forefront. But the vast, vast majority of Japanese are very welcoming and they, they cannot wait for you to come to this country. This issue has absolutely nothing to do with foreigners, all right? It has everything to do with societal issues in Japan. And I think that that's going to be, that it impacts me because I live in the society and I like it very much. And I'm not perfect in the society, but I try really, really, really hard to be a benefit, an asset, and I think everybody does. And that's what makes Japan such a safe place, a great place to live, a wonderful place to visit. But if, if you lose trust or that, that societal, the rules break down, rules are rules for a reason. They need to be enforced, all right? So I'm really hoping that they enforce these, uh, th these people get, you know, hammered by the law. Police are now involved. That's a new thing. Before police were never involved, the company would take care of it because the police are busy. Are they? I don't know. So leave your comments below. I want to hear from you. This is such an interesting topic. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back in another live stream really, really soon. <laughs> Something a little bit better than, than this stuff, okay? Because th this is just, yeah. I will eat, I will eat sushi again. I, I really want to be supportive of this industry. All right, everybody. Take care.